smart cities, smart agriculture, and that is why we have a bit of a showcase there, apart from the project, just to show you how those things can, can be achieved. But before we move to that, Your Excellency, I'm just to let you know that the rural areas are not being uh, left behind. So um, let me just show you a quick video of the project we're doing to cover the rural areas as well. Information and communication technologies play an increasingly more important role to Malawi's economic and social development. However, despite 25 years of mobile phone services in Malawi, many hard to reach areas still do not enjoy mobile services because of lack of network coverage. It is sad that in the 21st century, and 57 years after independence, many Malawians are still not connected to civilization. Communities of Vuvumwe in Mzimba, Msagambewa in Doa, and Malota in Mulanje districts are some of the many areas in Malawi which were denied the right to participate in the global civilization due to lack of network coverage. Part of the problem is that these areas are in difficult geographical locations which made it difficult for commercial mobile phone service providers to construct network towers. For these communities, to access network, some had to climb higher ground. Others resorted to network from neighboring countries like Zambia. But Minister of Information through the Malawi Digital Broadcast Network Limited MDBNL, upon noticing these challenges, embarked on the last mile connectivity project to connect rural hard to reach areas to mobile network. And ICT giants Huawei Technologies were contracted to construct telecommunication towers to connect these areas. The role of MDBNL is to bring a communication gap that exists between the rural and the urban. The last mile connectivity project, people are able to access network, they are able to access internet, so that they can easily communicate to those that they need. But what we have noticed in our case is the people easily finding access of market of their produce. Education system has benefited because it can easily access information for the schools. What we're doing in, in, in the last model connectivity is we are partnering with the tech operators. We build the towers and the tech operators are bringing the connectivity to their switch and other things to allow people to access internet and voice in the remotest areas. ICT infrastructure is crucial to the development of the country's economy. This government is uh, fully aware of the need to create uh, a digital economy. And you know an economy, an economy will work where there are people and people must be connected. If we cannot connect our people, we can be talking of uh, growing an economy, but if they are not uh, are connected, I think that would be a far-fetched dream. So uh, there is need for us to continue investing and investing very, very well to make sure that uh, the majority of Malawians are actually part of the uh, ICT movement in this country. The communities are singing a different song. So this, this is... Uh, uh, as you may have noticed, Your Excellency, um, all these sites which we are building in those rural areas are solar powered. Yeah. Actually, Huawei is doing quite a lot of work in solar. Uh, we're showcasing here a case in Cameroon. We've got a project connecting 1,000 villages off grid, connecting them to solar. We've already implemented about 25 megawatts of, uh, of power in, in the, uh, in, uh, uh, I think, up to 40,000 households. And we believe this is a very good technology that can accelerate electrification in Malawi so that the rural people can also, they need power to be able to access the kind of technologies that we're talking about, Your Excellency. And 
Um, I spoke earlier on about the smart city concept. Um, let, let me just, I, I don't want to take much of your time, but I just want to introduce you to this concept of smart city where we're using the latest technology uh, in the knowledge society to sort of improve livelihood and uh, security and things like that. Like a case in point, this is uh, a case where we use big data platform, uh, high definition video, and uh, use these co collaborative devices, building something like a, a command center for the security people to enhance the enforcement uh, efficiency in terms of security. Um, we've got cases maybe like in Kenya and we're doing something in South Africa where we, like the traffic robots, you don't need a traffic policeman there. We put this kind of gadgets there, you cross the traffic, it picks your car. Because it's intelligent, it can analyze, it can send all that information, you know, improving the efficiency on our roads. Um, something else which I believe is also important, I mentioned, yes, I mentioned is the um, uh, e-education, which smart education, where we are based on the same platform, we're building a platform for the digital native, more interactive, more video based, so with things like smart campus and uh, um, research collaboration. We're working with, uh, right now we have more than 2,600 universities that we have sort of given this kind of platform for. Um, Your Excellency, yes. Uh, Your Excellency, may I uh, finally just, we know that everybody is talking about 5G and uh, we thought that we could also showcase a bit of 5G here. Uh, 5G has got two or three aspects actually. The first of course high capacity, but the second which is of more interest to us is a, a, a large number of connections. So we're not only connecting human beings, we're connecting everything. So we've got a case here of connected cows. Connected, yeah, cows. You know, we've got uh, application worldwide where they put some gadgets on the cows and it can monitor the, the hormone balance, everything in the cow and help them to do manage the breeding and produce better, uh, better quality meat or better quality dairy products. So this borders around smart agriculture, all of it being enabled by um, 5G, 5G technology. Yeah, so this here is the world's leading latest and greatest 5G uh, box which we are demonstrating here. Um, finally, Your Excellency, as one of the end products of the connectivity that we're going to build, it's the collaboration uh, in terms of the, the, the government uh, infrastructure. So we have a, a video conferencing facility which is part of the project being delivered. May I invite you now, um, humbly invite you, to take a video conference with uh, your people in Karonga and Mangochi district. Mungate kuzi kuzi fotogoza noka. Yes. Uh, good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. I'm Sultan Kilo Chief Joe from Mangochi. I'm glad to have you, Your Excellency. Uh, interacting with me today uh, on rural development, which includes uh, the technologies that are enabling our uh, communities to communicate. We thank your government for this initiative. Uh, our communities are really thankful uh, for all this development. You are excellent. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow. There is Karunga also on the line. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your Royal Highness. Uh, 
Yes, your excellency, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Very well, your excellency, and uh, how is your excellency? Oh, we're doing pretty good. We're looking uh, good. I'm very thankful to God that uh, today we're able to communicate. Now, nah, feel. We have done a few times, huh? Bon, 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 bon dia! Bon dia! <laughs> bon dia, Esteban! <laughs> we should be speaking <laughs> in <laughs> Israel as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Richard. Well, as my brother has said, this is a joy. We are very thankful to you, sir, and your government for this initiative that we are now able in the rural area to communicate with the head of the state. It is the first time in the history of this country. And may it continue. Thank you. Our people are looking forward to e-learning, to e-civic education in the wake of this pandemic called the coronavirus. So we are saying to you, sir, and to your government, that you continue doing the best that you can for your people. We are looking forward. The people in the rural areas are very, very happy. I wish they were able to come and see that we are able to communicate directly this morning. May God bless your attention. Well, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. May I now invite you to the rest of the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, may I request that we all stand as His Excellency the President was. Excellency, may I request that uh, we all remain standing for the Malawi National Anthem. seats. Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera, President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency, Madam Monica Chakwera, First Lady of the Republic of Malawi. Before we proceed with our program, it would be wise enough to dedicate it unto the Lord. As such, allow me to request Bishop Raf Kachikuni of the Living Waters Church to pray for us this morning. Bishop Kachikuni, please. Let's bow heads in prayer. Our God and our Father, the creator of heaven and earth and everything therein, I want to thank you and to bless you for your goodness, 
and for your mercies which are new every morning. Precisely, I want to thank you and to bless you for this day that you have made for us, that we rejoice and be glad in it. And as a Malawi nation, in this day, we are launching a project called Fiber Backbone. I pray and commit this function into your hands that you bless it and bless everything that will take place here. I pray that as we launch this function, it will come to its fruition and benefit every Malawian. For your word says, when you begin a good work, you perfect it and bring it to completion. Father, I want to thank you. I want to bless you for our president, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera. The Lord, even as he launches this function, I pray, Lord, for the wisdom, the understanding, and the big heart that you gave to King Solomon, that even as he leads and guides this nation, he will do it according to your will, not man's will. For man's will fails, but God's will always succeed. I want to thank Lord, I want to bless you, for blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we pray the Lord may you start us, may you start with us now and take us to the end. We pray all this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Bishop Raf Kajiguni. Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera, President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency, Madam Monica Chakwera, First Lady of the Republic of Malawi. Honorable Gospel Kazako, Minister of Information, and all cabinet ministers and deputy ministers here present. Mr. Liao Yang, Vice President of the Huawei Technologies Southern Africa region and all the management and staff of Huawei Technologies. All the leaders, representatives and members of the Tonse Alliance here present. Mr. Zangazanga Chikosi, Secretary to the President and Cabinet, and all the government officials here present. Your Worship, Councillor Juliana Kaduya, Mayor of the Lilongwe City. Honorable Abu Magnais Naliwa, MP. Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee of Media, Communications and Technology. Honorable George Zulu, Member of Parliament for Lilongwe City West Constituency. Bishop Raf Kajikuni, the officiating clergy, and all religious leaders here present. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me pleasure this morning to welcome you to this great day as we gather to witness the launch of the Malawi National Fiber Backbone Project. Your Excellency, this is an important project to this nation as it will help to enhance the coverage and quality of high-speed communication network thereby improving the communication infrastructure of the country. Without taking much of the time, Your Excellency, allow me at this point to request Mr. Liao Yong, 
Vice President of Huawei Southern African Region to make a statement, after which he will make a symbolic donation to you uh, from the Seeds for the Future program. Mr. Young, please. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Malawi, Madame Monica Jaquila, government ministers, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is such a great honor for me to be here witnessing and being part of this historic moment, the launching of Malawi National Fiber Backbone Project. I used to be an engineer. Backbone to me is more than a technical jargon. It is words with a profound connotation. Why is the project called the Backbone? I can think of at, at least three reasons. First, this is the backbone of connectivity. By rolling out over 2,800 kilometers fiber cable and setting up a national data center, this project is expected to connect 29 cities and cover more than 100,000 businesses and homes, deepening connectivity and closing the last mile gap in major cities. It is like the human body with the national data center as a brain, national fiber cable as the central nervous system, and a metro and access network as essential sensory nerves all over our body. It connects the unconnected, especially for those people living in the rural areas. It closes the digital divider. It enables innovation to realize major breakthrough in growing economy. Second, this is a backbone of digital devices, services. Amidst this pandemic, we all real realized that the lift and recovery of the ICT brought about is not only remarkable, but immense. Through the connectivity brought by the project, there is a future within which where our farmer can get timely marketing information and get their product sold through the well-developed e-commerce. There is a future within which our students can get knowledge and write exams through e-platform. There is a future within which where people can enjoy government services from wherever they are in real time and a cost cost-effective manner. Third, and most importantly, there is a backbone of opportunity and prosperity. The International Telecommunication Union established that a 10% increase in mobile phone, in mobile broadband penetration in Africa can generate 2.5% increase in GDP per capita. With the connectivity and digital service presented by the project, the entrepreneurial spirit, creativity, and the potential that the lights within Malawi will be released to fully leap the digital dividends. So it connects the Malawian people not only with each other, with modern technology and information, but with opportunity, development, and a better life. Your Excellency, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, at Huawei, we are very excited to roll out this historic project, contributing to Malawi's development. We believe in Malawi's future. We recognize the need to grow together with Malawi and her beautiful people. We are willing and able to do so with our expertise in ICT by building more than digital infrastructure and equipping her people with digital skills to remain competitive in this fast-changing world. Last but not the least, I would like also to give special credit to the government of Malawi under, your, under the grace of Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Makafe Jaquila, for the tremendous job they continue to do in shaping and growing Malawi's ICT sector. I further wish you great success in this particular project. 
I thank you all. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, I will now request Mr. Young to make a symbolic donation to you. This is a donation from the Seed for the Future program, which is one of Huawei's flagship corporate social responsibility programs. The program, Your Excellency, was started five years ago and more than 1,000 students have benefited from this program, out of which 50 top excellent ICT students were sent to China for a systematic training. Manja, 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 manja. Thank you, Mr. Young. Your Excellency, the seed for the future program, you may wish to know that uh, it has been expanded. And this year alone, 50 more ICT students will be trained under this program. This program will help to develop the ICT talent pool and assist in the digital transformation for the country. Your Excellency, at this point, allow me to invite the Minister of Information, Honorable Gospel Kazako, to make a statement, after which he will request Your Excellency to address us this morning. Honorable Kazako, please. Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Makafe Chakwera, President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency, Madam Monica Chakwera, the First Lady of the Republic of Malawi. Honorable Felix Mluso, Minister of Finance. Honorable Newton Kambala, Minister of Energy, all Tonsi Alliance partners present here, Mr. Liaong, Vice President of the Huawei Southern Region of Africa, Mr. Zangazanga Chikosi, Secretary of the President and Cabinet, Mr. Liu Giyu, Economic and Commercial Councillor of the Chinese Embassy to the Republic of Malawi, Mr. Francis Bisika, Principal Secretary for the Department of E-Government in the Ministry of Information, all government officials present here, Mr. Zhang Bang Bing, Managing Director for Huawei Malawi, members of the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Your Excellency, I have a noble task this morning of requesting you, Your Excellency, to officially launch phase two of the Malawi National Backbone Fiber However, Your Excellency, before I do so, with your indulgence, allow me, Your Excellency, to say a few words. Your Excellency, you have always reminded us that the most prosperous countries in the world are those that are harnessing technology to capture social and economic opportunities that come with it. In the context of ICT development, it is a vision 
of your government to learn from that fact, increase connectivity for our people, and leverage technology at every level like never before. In fact, it goes without saying that the best way to predict the future is to create it now, and now is the time. And so today, Your Excellency, we stand here full of hope and determination to shape the future that we want. We gather to bear witness to the launch of the Malawi National Backbone Fiber Phase 2 project. Your Excellency, let me make mention that this project is one of the most defining projects for Malawi's digital transformation and connectivity journey. It will bring about some of the most important novel solutions to meet current ICT demands and alleviate challenges we are faced with today. It will further leapfrog our steps to attaining part of our vision, Vision 2063. The project will offer the most reliable solutions, improved communications infrastructure, improved internet penetration, improved national broadband connectivity, improved ICT services such as e-learning, improved public service delivery, job creation, and security, among other things. Your Excellency, in your government's mission to realize the Tonse philosophy in building a new better Malawi for all, we remain alive to the fact that global technology is fast-paced and persistent in transforming our daily lives. As such, Your Excellency, Malawi's ICT industry should equally reflect the alertness, integration, and adaptability required for not only global competitiveness, but also social and economic development, especially in desperate times like these, when we are battling and grappling against the COVID-19 pandemic. We have heard from previous people before that uh, most activities have gone online now. Therefore, most investments and effective use of these technologies in response to COVID-19 pandemic can actually decide how strong Malawi is going to return to its growth trajectory by adopting new technological trends and other models that emerge from this important outbreak, Your Excellency. As we move forward towards building a new and better Malawi, Your Excellency, a Malawi for all, putting in place ultra-modern information and communication infrastructure is vital for improved service delivery in many, many aspects. It is therefore the view of your government, Your Excellency, that such life-giving monumental developments ought to be spread through Malawi and throughout Malawi indeed, so as to serve our people better and much better. The efficient and affordable ICT infrastructure and services will further allow our country to effectively participate in the global digital economy and increase our overall economic well-being and competitiveness. Allow me at this point, Your Excellency, to express my gratitude to all cooperating partners that have been tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that the projects that we have 
become a success. The Malawi Communications Regulator Authority, MACRA, has been doing a commendable work to oversee many ICT projects, including phase one, the mobile service providers, and UAE for being reliable and trusted partners. With great satisfaction from the works that have been concluded in phase one, we are confident as a ministry, Your Excellency, that this partnership with UAE and the government of Malawi will result to our people reaping the benefits of the latest technologies. Your Excellency, allow me to also express my gratitude to the private sector for helping us to integrate technology at every level. For many years now, UAE has been a key strategic partner for Malawi's ICT talent development in many aspects. We have partnered with UAE on not only projects like this, but also educational programs. You may be aware that through Seeds for the Future program, Your Excellency, UAE is making attempts to cultivate Malawi's ICT talents, improving employability of our ICT students by equipping them with latest ICT. And this Seeds for the Future will also be breeding new people, our people, to start manning our technology. Because it is in our interest that we man this technology ourselves. We do not want to continue um, depending on the foreign hands. In the past five years, Your Excellency, UAE sent 50 excellent Malawian students to China for ICT talent training under seats for the future program. And in 2020, a virtual one was held where many local students participated alongside many nations. We are confident that with these joint efforts of the government and the enterprises of China and Malawi, Malawi will have an army of high quality ICT talents to help the country realize its ICT vision and strategic program. The phase two that Your Excellency is launching today is even going to make education-related projects available in the near future. Your Excellency, it is now with great sense of pride and humility that I invite you to address us and officially launch the phase two of the Malawi National Backbone Fiber Project. Your Excellency, sir.
Je Je Your Excellency, Madam Monica Jaguera, First Lady of the Republic of Malawi. <laughs> Honorable Gospel Kazako, Minister of Information and all the Cabinet Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present. <laughs> Mr. Diao Yang, Vice President of the Huawei Technologies, Southern Africa region, and all the management and staff of Huawei Technologies. All the leaders, representatives, and members of the Tonse Alliance here present. <laughs> Mr. Zanga Zanga, Jikosi, Secretary to the President and Cabinet, and all the government officials here present. Your Worship, Councilor Juliana Kaduya, Mayor of the City of Lilongwe. Honorable Abo Maknais Nariwa, MP, Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Media, Communications, and Technology. Honorable George Zulu, Member of Parliament for Lilongwe City West Constituency. Bishop Raf Kachkuni, officiating clergy, and all the religious leaders here present. Members of the press, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful, grateful to preside over the launch of the second phase of the National Fiber Backbone, which is a latest fruit of the wonderful relationship between Malawi and China. As we reflect on the implications of this fiber backbone, allow me to remind every one of us of how this project project fits into our national development goals. A month and a half ago, I was at Parliament at the invitation of the Speaker to deliver my State of the Nation address. On that occasion, I named three goals that my administration will be pursuing for the next four years and stated three accelerators for uh, which we will invest in to help Malawi reach those goals faster. As you might recall, I said that the three goals we are pursuing are job creation, wealth creation, and food security. While the three accelerators we would step on to reach these goals faster are infrastructure, human capital, and governance. The remarkable and exciting thing about this National Fiber Backbone Project is that it aligns perfectly with all three accelerators. This fiber backbone is at once an infrastructure that we need as a nation to keep up with a world that is moving towards all things smart. A platform for enhancing our human capital through the attainment of the skills demanded by the digital future that we are entering and an instrument for revolutionizing our governance by digitizing it for greater efficiency and effectiveness, which has been ably demonstrated here by my virtual and real-time interaction with two traditional leaders who are far away.
Paramount Chief Kiungu, way up there in Karonga, and Senior Chief Sultan Chowe in Mangochi. In short, this fiber backbone is critical for making our economy, our society, and our governance smarter. The urgency of going smart and digital in our economy, and society, and governance has never been more evident than it has been this past year. The global pandemic has compelled us to find innovative and smart ways of working, living, interacting, and trading. And by all indications, the world's dependence on digital technologies deepened by our desperate need to weather and survive the social and economic disruptions of the pandemic is irreversible. The world is presently rushing out of an analog past into a digital future, and there is no going back, nor can we as a nation afford to fall behind. And as such, this fiber backbone is a critical vessel for enabling us as a nation to sail into the digital waters of tomorrow. This fiber backbone is a critical vessel for carrying our nation into a future of smart hospitals, smart cities, smart schools, smart factories, smart governance, smart projects, smart roads, smart cars, smart trading, smart banking, and smart community. This fiber backbone is a critical vessel for accelerating the implementation of our ICT National Master Plan, the pursuit of Malawi 2063, and the Attainment of Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. This fiber backbone is a critical vessel for creating an ecosystem of fast technology innovations, including technologies that have yet to be invented. Now, to make the most of this backbone, to unleash its full potential and to prepare ourselves for the digital future it will create. It is very critical that both public and private sectors make massive investments in technology. And this needs to happen now. It is not enough to have an infrastructure like this if we do not also have the technologies needed to use it for increased access to information and services, increased connectivity between people and organizations, increased productivity and resource efficiency, and increased industrialization. And similarly, it is not enough to have an infrastructure like this if we do not develop the capacity of Malawians to make full use of it. Leaving the management of this backbone in the hands of foreigners is something that neither Malawi nor China wants. That is why I am grateful. Grateful that our friends from China have not stopped at developing this backbone but have also gifted Malawi with 50 scholarships to go to some of our bright youth and train them in areas critical to our ability to manage this backbone ourselves. And that's in addition to those that have already been trained. Jesse. 
In this approach, China has generously given us fish and given us the tools and skills to fish. That is a mark of true friendship. And I convey my sincere gratitude to the People's Republic of China for such solidarity. The work that our private sector partner Huawei has done in this country for the past 14 years is truly exceptional, a real contribution to our country's socioeconomic development. Not only has it worked to deliver this backbone, but it has been instrumental in the introduction of new technologies to Malawi, including our transition from, 4, uh, from 2G to 4G. And they just demonstrated out there a machine that works for 5G, despite all of the bad prayers regarding the same. As our development partners work hard and work smart, to help us build a new Malawi of digital information. The last thing we need is to be caught wasting precious resources that are critical for regulating our ICT industry. I was therefore dismayed, Honorable Minister, by your report to me of the wasteful spending at the Malawi Communications Regulatory Authority, MACRA. That the board chair of MACRA could not find a more cost-effective way of enhancing the capacity of board members than taking them to Dubai and blowing millions is a clear sign that the leadership of MACRA board needs to change immediately. Last year, Last year, I spent endless hours configuring board, boards of parastatals, and if any parastatal board that I appointed at that time thinks that their position is a license to one on wastefulness, they better think again. I expect board chairs to be watchdogs against waste not an evidence of waste. If we are going to make good use of the work and tools that we get from our development partners, such as this fiber backbone, then we must ourselves get serious in this country. We need to look around us and see the poverty and suffering of our people so that we can put their needs above our own spending appetites. All of us who've been given a chance to lead, whether in the presidency or in cabinet or in MDAs or in boards or in embassies, need to behave as though we understand that Malawians have given us a chance to lead so that we can serve them. So as far as I'm concerned, if you are anywhere in my administration to serve yourself, you need to get out of the way. If you want Kuadiera Malawi, 
the place to do that is not in my administration. My administration is for servants, not masters. I thank you for listening. And now, it's a joy for me to launch this second phase of the Nation of Fiber Backbone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency will now officially launch the Fiber Backbone program. Manja, manja, manja. Manja, 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 manja. Kukazi gita project imene ya Malawi National Fiber Backbone. Your Excellency, we are now drawing closer to the very end of our program this morning. May I request that we all remain standing for the Malawi National Anthem. Anthem marking the end of the program this morning, the official launch of the uh, Malawi National Backbone Fiber Phase 2 project, which yes. will uh, see ICT services being brought to every Malawian uh, towards um, ICT for all. This is in line with the vision 2063. And uh, in a moment from now, His Excellency the State President. Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera will be taking leave. He was speaking uh, moments ago. He spoke of uh, a number of issues, including the need for the uh, public and private sectors 
uh, to invest heavily in technologies in order to unleash uh, full potential of uh, this uh, project to the president or so. That was the official launch of the second phase of the Malawi National Backbone Fiber Project in Lilongwe. Do stay tuned as Times Television gives you more programs. Pamene wena amatika nchunkama, wena amadimuai, supo nyamuini. Beza ni mpoto sankani nkani, mpikisano watangu pa